You men will have to get out of here. This is a restricted area. Well, we're just out here on a hunting trip. How did you get by the roadblocks down on the main highway? We've been hunting in this area for three days. You'll have to turn around and move out. This is an atomic testing ground. Huh? The bomb's scheduled to go off here in the morning. Okay. scheduled for tomorrow morning is one of a series which is being conducted by the Atomic Energy Commission in conjunction with the Army, Air Force, and Marines. This blast will be a tower explosion and will be detonated 10 to 11 miles from the control point on a bearing of 10 degrees east of west. The section of the Nevada Proving Ground south of the control point is the Frenchman Flat site, and the area to the north is known as Yucca Basin. Several locations within the basin have been activated for nuclear tests, and the clearing of these areas is now being completed. The scheduled time for the blast is now 0600 tomorrow morning. Sorry, you can't get to Elko by the cutoff. You'll have to take the main highway to Carson City and cut over through Reno. But that's 50 miles out of the way. Can't be helped. The shortcut's in the blast area. Oh. Is that where they do all the dirty work? That's the tower. It'll be Adams itself this time tomorrow. What's that? It's an old mining town. Lost Hope City. It blows up tomorrow, too. Ghost town? Yeah. We went through it yesterday just to make sure. Maybe we'd better give it another look just in case. copters up until dark tonight and have them make one last sweep as soon as it gets light tomorrow morning. The roadblocks stay in until I give you the word. You can write your story, Larry, that the area around Lost Hope City has been cleared. At least it will be by the time your paper's out. Thanks. Are you covering the blast? When the roll is called out yonder, I'll be there. <laughs> Come in. Hello, Colonel. Charlie. What are you doing here? Relieving you from duty, as they say in the English war pictures. I'm covering the blast, and you're going to Carson City. For what? I had a prison break up there. When did he bust out? Last night, when nobody was looking. You are to leave immediately. Have you been cleared to cover this operation? Not completely. We'd better get started. Why does that paper of yours have to make a switch at this late date? Because Larry is our big ace scoop reporter, and Sam Hurley is big news. What about the blast? Well, Colonel, when you've seen one atom bomb, you've seen them all. My regards to your wife and children. Drive carefully. Put cotton in your ears. Hadn't we better just hurry like anything? Get me security. How's everything? Just fine, thanks. Another piece of pie? No, thanks. Hey, more coffee? Mm -mm. Hey, Larry! 
Hiya, Pete. You haven't been up this way in a couple of weeks. Uh, we've been busy blowing up the desert. Give me a couple of packs of cigarettes, will you? What's it going to be tomorrow morning? No, more of the same thing, only bigger. Hey, there go my windows again. <laughs> Where are you heading? Carson City. Hey. Where's the kitchen? The kitchen? The place where people who can't pay their bills wash the dishes. My first customer today, this is what I get. How much does she owe? 50 cents. Here, I think it's deductible. You might as well take that back, mister. It won't buy you anything. My dear lady, I'm thinking of this poor man, his business, his three children. What three children? You can always find three children. I'll see you on my way back, Pete. OK. Hey, how come you're broke? I thought you came in on the last bus. It's as far towards Reno as my money would go. Oh, you got a job there? You might call it that. Well, thanks for everything. Hey, Carson City's on the way to Reno. Larry, I'll give you a lift. You're welcome. Day, isn't it? You know, this is the road where those three people from Cedar Rapids died of thirst last year. Could I uh, offer you a drink? Then how about a lift? I'm going as far as Carson City. Why not? Might as well be chased or stranded. <laughs> My name's Larry. Why should I doubt you? What's yours? Dorothy Vale. But don't consider that an introduction. Dottie, I think you're bitter. You must have had a cruel life. Bad luck, hard knocks. Don't open a relief agency for me. What do you do when you're not beating off advances? When's that? I mean, what do you do for a living? Nightclubs. Singer? Dancer. What do you do? A newspaper man. <laughs> you got many readers around here? Oh, just a few prospectors and gophers. Are you on a story now? Jailbreak and murder. He doesn't look like a killer. States have been alerted to apprehend the convicts who are known to be in a green 1941 Ford sedan. But as of this hour, nothing has been seen of them since their escape. Citizens are urged to be on the lookout for these criminals. But caution should be used as these men are armed and considered dangerous. Well, so far, so good. How you doing, Bart? Not so good. They really got me. How long have we been driving? Oh, a couple of hours. We're right on schedule. The service station's only about a mile up the road. Right, dummy? We gonna make it, Sam? No trouble at all. We'll get rid of this junkie, pick up a car at the station, and be at Johnny's in three hours. The bullet's still in me. I'm gonna have to have a doc. You'll get a doctor, don't worry. <laughs> Help Bart 
sorry to keep you waiting. I was fixing his engine up. You alone here? Hell. Nobody in the house. You know who I am? I read the papers this morning. You uh, do much business here? Enough to live. Let's take a look around. What's that uh, shack over there? Just a pump house. Here? Hide him in the back, then check the house. to kill him. Well, I couldn't let him hang around to tell everybody we'd been here. we gonna get a doctor. Johnny will know one. We'll pick up a car here before long. Maybe that guy out there has a car. I want one with people in it. Oh. Hurt? Maybe if I had a drink. Sure. Well, Dummy, look in the shack outside. See if you can't find a bottle or something. Huh? You got a lot of guts, Bart. Been a tough trip so far. Worth it. We make it. Oh, we'll make it. How long do you think we'll have to hold up with Johnny before we can go for the money? Longer than we planned with you all shut up here. Maybe you ought to leave me and go on. You can quit that kind of talk. We started out together, we'll end up together one way or another. Well, that dummy really has everything set up fine. Look at the clothes he managed to dig up for us. Pretty fancy, huh? <laughs> oh, that ought to do it. Here you go. I'll make you feel better. <coughs> Help yourself. There's plenty more of that where we're going. We'll patch you up, then we'll get into our new clothes. Glad you noticed the gas. I'd hate to get caught in this heat. Are you sure you can't stay with me longer than a week? Don't you think I'd like to? Well, you could at least fly up for the other weekends. I'll be with you as much as I can. You know that. We'll get out of Reno and go to Tahoe this weekend. You certainly took your time. I certainly did. Oh. What do you want? A lift, Buster. A nice, fast ride. Watch him, dummy. I'll be right out. Why don't you just take the car? Let's go. In the other direction. What are you going to do with us? I'll see. Why don't you just let us out? Your protection. The cops aren't looking for five people. Hey, Sam, look. Her husband's a doctor. You're a doctor, Buster? No, I'm a friend of Mrs. Garvin and Dr. Garvin. I'm an insurance broker. Let's see your wallet. Arthur Ashton, insurance broker. Tough. Yeah, Arthur. I'll bet her husband's just crazy about you. Pasadena, California. 
Not even in the same state. No. Keep driving, Mrs. Garvin. Slow down. It's a roadblock. Back the way we came. Here's some money. Go into that store and pick up some food. And uh, get a couple of bottles for dummy, too. You go with them. Get three or four lanterns. You feel all right to watch her? Sure. What are we doing? Getting you a doctor. Dr. Garvin's office. That's right. Just a moment, please. Now, there's nothing to worry about, Miss Cogman. Just don't get off your diet again. See you next week. Won't be long. Uh, doctor, it's long distance. I'll take it in my office. Hello. Yes, this is Dr. Garvin. What? Who? I said this is Sam Hurley. If you want to know who I am, take a look at the front page of your morning paper. A friend of mine's got a bullet in him. He needs a doctor. No, Doc, he wants you. Why? Because I've got your wife. If anything should happen to my friend, she might not look so pretty anymore. Yeah, your wife. She's driving a Chrysler sedan with a California license. 1T62716. And she's with a guy by the name of... Arthur Ashton. Yes, yes, I believe she's with you. But is this her idea of a practical joke? Listen, Doc, I know where you are. I know this country. I know where I'm going to be. I want you to take a plane to Las Vegas and rent a car. I'll tell you how to go. I'll make it just as clear as crystal. You take Route 95 above Las Vegas. About 50 miles out of town, just beyond Charleston, you come to a bridge. Yes, yes, of course it's clear, but... All right, a couple of more things. Don't show up and you're a widower. Show up with anyone else, you're still a widower. I'll blast her in two right in front of you. And don't try to get smarter than me. Play it straight, you got yourself a wife. Get cute, you got yourself a corpse. Dummy in his comic books. How are things in outer space? A couple of miles along here now, you're gonna make a turn. Why don't you tell us something now? Where are you taking us? What are you gonna do? All right, Arthur, if it'll steady your nerves. We've been planning this break a long time, and it means a lot to us, a half a million bucks. We planned on everything, even the roadblocks. Since we can't get through to some friends of ours right now, we've got another spot all picked out. Where? You'll find out when you get there. Now, shut up. Will the doctor be there, Sam? Well, he'll need a few hours, but he'll be there. What's the matter with the car? I think I stopped at that filling station for perfume. We're out of gas. Why didn't you tell me? You're not letting anybody say anything. How come you work on little paper in Las Vegas? Why don't you move to a big town? Supposing I said I like the country. I'd ask you why. Oh, there are lots of reasons. The people, the climate, the country. You must be half lizard. <laughs> well, you know the old saying, the West, where men are men. That's all they are any place. <laughs> where are you from, Dottie? Pittsburgh. You didn't like it? I don't know. I never got a clear look at it. <laughs> hey, look. This is really your day. Having trouble? Yes, I ran out of gas. Well, this is no place to do that. Hop in. She's got some friends. Dummy, everybody in. You too.
not making very good time, Hurley. I'm doing all right. How much gas you got in that tank? Three quarters full. Yeah, that's fine. Move over, I'll drive. Keep me covered in case this guy gets cute. How'd you recognize me? I'm a reporter. I was on my way to Carson City to do a story about you. I'll try to see that you get some material. Is she a reporter, too? Just a friend. Cozy. Where are you headed for? A desert resort I know near here. City. You can't go there, Hurley. Want to bet? There's an atom bomb that says you'd better not. I heard about it. They've cleared the whole area around there. Good. We won't have any visitors. That test takes place tomorrow morning. I'll be out of there by then. What about us? That's a good question, Arthur. I'll have to give it some thought. time, too, from the way this heap's acting. Now, well, let's get down there. All right, everybody out, but stay here. All right, in here. Everybody over by the bar. Sit over there, Bart. What time you got, reporter? 5.25. When did you say they were going to clear this area? It's already been cleared, but they still have planes up. Well, this clock's been wound. Dummy, you better hide that car. Put it in the shed across the street and bring everything in. Now, look, I uh, hadn't planned on dragging along such a crowd. But since we're all here, you might as well get a couple of things straight. Stay away from that door. And uh, don't give me any trouble, because I won't take it. Let's get some more things straight while we're at it. Are we going to get out of here before tomorrow morning? I sure hope you do, Arthur. You don't think we're going to just sit around here with an insane man waiting to be blown up, do you? Yeah, I think you probably will. If you didn't have that gun... You'd try something dumb and I'd take you to pieces. Stop trying to be a hero! I hate heroes. What are we waiting for, Sam? A doctor for my friend. Where are you going to get the doctor around here? He's already on his way. Her husband, all the way from Pasadena. What are you talking about? He'll be here a little after midnight. You called Neil? If that's your husband. Botney's a doctor and your husband's a doctor. 
who has a good reason for showing up. What reason? You. <laughs> <Sign up. laughs> Shut up. What's the matter? He isn't getting here at midnight or any other time. What do you think a married woman's doing in Nevada when her husband's in California? I'm divorcing him. He wouldn't cross the street for me, much less risk his life. He'd better. Well, you don't have anything to laugh about at all. I hope he doesn't blame you if Neil doesn't show up. Why should he? It wasn't my idea to call Neil. I know, but you never can tell what these fellas are going to do. I think he's sort of interesting, don't you? Typical bully boy. I've run into a hundred of them. I haven't. I've never met anyone like him. Well, watch yourself. Don't let him get you alone. I'll have a lot of choice if that's what he wants. Just don't act foolish and start finding him fascinating. You know, he'd probably let us go if you offered him some money. Where would I get it? I'll write him a check. <laughs> I think this is one time you'll find your checkbook won't do you any good, Kay. Just the same, I want you to talk to him when he comes back. All right. Just in case I should live through this little experience, I'll need a story on you, Sam. What kind of a story? Oh, the usual kind of stuff. Are you were the victim of society and never had a chance? You don't believe in that, huh? Why should I? I've known too many victims of society who have ended up as bank presidents. And I served time with a lot of bank presidents. <laughs> How many men have you killed, Sam? Legally or illegally? What do you mean, legally? Well, they gave you permission to kill a lot of people during the war. You were in the army? Oh, sure. I was a hero for three years. Watching all my pals get their heads blown off. So now you don't have to write your story. I'll write it for you. Sam Hurley, another one of the vast army of young men who was ruined by the war. That's not bad. I got it from a story a guy did to me in Des Moines a few years ago. Are you a member of the vast army? I guess so. Anyway, he'll write it that way. Maybe it won't be that easy on you. Sure you will. You keep your job by writing what the people want. The people want to feel sorry for me. Do they? Oh, they want to see me shot down in a big bloody battle. But they want to feel sorry for me at the same time. You don't think very much of people, do you? I don't think very much of anything. Unless maybe it should happen to look like this. Is she a girl? I just met her today. What's your name? Guess. I said, what's your name? Now look, mister, you can use that tone on the Pasadena divorce case in there. I cut my teeth on tougher guys than you. You must have real tough teeth. I've got testimonials from guys who doubted it. How'd you happen to team with him? He gave me a lift. It was better than wading through the cactus all the way to Reno. When are you going to let us go? Why, don't you like it here? Oh, sure. You got a gun on my head and there's a bomb about to go off behind me. Maybe you don't have anything to worry about. Yeah, it's a real rest. Let's go inside. You first. Coming in, dummy. What's your name? Dottie. All right, Dottie. Go in with that other dame and fix us something to eat. just received word that the final preparations for the explosion of the new atomic bomb are now complete. The time is set for 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. But you listeners are urged to stay tuned to this station in case there should be any change. We'll try to give you ample warning so that you can get to your roofs and watch the flash from the explosion. And now, back to our recorded program. Okay, Bart. Not a word about us on the air. Guess we planned things pretty well. 
I wonder if that roadblock was for us or for that bomb. Probably both. Will Johnny know why we didn't show up? I uh, called him right after I talked to that doctor. He's meeting us at the main road with a bakery truck at 5.30 tomorrow morning. And they're cutting it pretty close if the bomb goes off at 6. This is the safest place in the world for us right now. They'll probably figure we got over the border during the night. Everything's going nice and smooth. I hope it keeps up that way. Yeah, you can do anything with money. We'll have half a million bucks. You don't think they'll find us after we get there? They won't be within 5,000 miles of guessing where we are. I hit the place once when I was a deckhand on a freighter. You never saw any place like it, Bart. Quiet, plenty of sunshine. Nice, friendly people, you know. Mind their own business. Sounds good, Sam. It will be. I wish that doctor would get here. Yeah, no, it really drags, doesn't it? Try to get some sleep. Well, you'd all be a hunk of that flash that people are going to watch. Haven't you ever wanted to become part of a great experiment? We're not even a mile from what's going to be blast center. You know what that means, Sam? I'll borrow a comic book from Dummy and find out. There won't even be a spot to mark where this place used to be. That's fine. It's kind of a crummy town anyway. Big man. He has atom bombs for breakfast. In the next chapter, the Martians invade. <laughs> How come you're up here for a divorce? He couldn't be the reason. It's none of your business. You got more money than your husband? Why should you be interested, Mr. Hurley? Well, I've always been interested in what makes pretty girls tick. Why they marry the men they do, why they leave them. <laughs> why they have to have money. You seem pretty preoccupied with money yourself. Well, a man who's wanted for murder needs friends. Money buys plenty of them. How many murders have you committed? Well, murder's the wrong word for it. I've killed two or three people who tried to stop me from doing what I wanted to do. What's that? Get away. You ever been locked up? Not the way you mean. I don't care what way it is. Some people can stand it and some people can't. The ones who can't would kill themselves and anybody else just to get out for five minutes. I think I know what you're talking about. Was it a bum marriage? For me, it was. How about your husband? Now look, Hurley. Will you shut up? The next time I want to hear from you, I'll let you know. You heard what he said about the bomb? I got plenty of time to think about that. All right, tell us what you're going to do. You're going to kill us or let us go. I haven't made up my mind. Right now, all I'm thinking about is getting Bart fixed up. The only good friend I've ever had. You didn't. <laughs> Me and old Sarge York once caught a hundred hon that way. <laughs> well, didn't inspect as much company. We should have known. Uh, well, just make yourself at home. Visitors don't drop in on me much more. Who are you? Asa Tremaine's my name. Been prospecting since the war. Just come in from the hills. What war? <laughs> the war. I was in it. I seen old Black Jack Persian himself once in Paris. I could have touched him as that close. What are you creeping around here for? It's my home. Come to get my things. Uh, are you one of them government fellas? No. I thought you might be worried about me getting out. I'm going to leave right away. You alone? Sure. We'd better be making tracks, sir. Or maybe you don't know about that bomb. We know about it. Them things sure ripped this desert to pieces. Just think of what we could have done with a couple of them things at the Marne. What are you doing with that gun? I'm trying to get you to shut up. Get over there with the rest of them. Your friend hurt? Get over there and sit down. Uh, 
Well, sure is nice to see some pretty girls again. Don't see many women around here much no more. Everybody had supper? <laughs> What's going on? Tell me I'm going to take a look around. He may have relatives. Peculiar sort of a fellow, ain't he? Kind of hard eyes. Reminds me of a killer I knowed right here in this town back in 192. Killed about eight men before we got a rope around his neck. Newspaper man, huh? Used to be quite a lot of mining around here back in the old days. Used to be a lot of drinking around here, too. And a lot of women. Fact is, I don't know why anybody left. Anybody want a drink? Nice, isn't it? Men usually get their courage out of a bottle, but we girls can get it from a lipstick. Quite a spot between the devil and the bright red bomb. I suppose you're more or less used to men like him. Who could get used to anything like him? Well, I mean, you must run into lots of men in your type of work. I run into lots of men when I'm just loafing. What did he talk about when he kept you outside this afternoon? We didn't talk much. Oh. What does this fellow expect us to do? Sit around here and wait till that bomb goes off? That seems to be the idea. Don't seem very practical, does it? What's he mad about? He's just sore at life in general, Asa. Well, I ain't, and I'd just leave, not wait here with him. <laughs> Where'd he come from? He just busted out of the penitentiary. I noted. it. You can't fool me with eyes like them. Have you got any ideas what we could do? Just sit tight until we find out what he's going to do. You'll have to move pretty soon if the doctor doesn't show up. Then what? You'll probably take the car and let us walk out. Yes, but could we get out of the danger area in time? Depends how long we have. Wonder what he wants here. There's nothing left to rob. Well, I'm getting sick of the way everyone just sits around and talks about what we should do. Nobody tries to do anything, to offer him any money or tell him that we don't intend to... No, I won't sit down. I'm not used to being ordered around by just anyone. I... Take your hands off me. Leave her alone. Watch it, son. This ain't the time. What are you reading? A little pamphlet they gave us on the bomb. <laughs> Trying to cheer yourself up? It says that 55% of the casualties die of blast pressure and 5% of radiation. That make you feel better? It's 11.30, Sam. He isn't coming. He could have had trouble. What do you want with us? Why don't you let us go? I'm afraid to be alone. 
Hey, Sam. Did you ever hear of a killer named Martin? No, I never heard of him. He sure was a mean little fella. Right here in this bar one time, I seen him shoot the shoes clean off for girls working here. <laughs> she sure was mad. She went stomping around here in her bare feet, yelling and cussing. <laughs> uh, you never heard of this Martin, huh? No. You awake, Bert? Yeah. How's it going? It still hurts pretty bad, huh? I was just thinking how close we can to getting the way clean on that armored car sticker. <laughs> Everything planned good. Everything turned out fine. We stashed the money. Then we get trapped up by a crummy car battery. Yeah, it's just a bad break. You can't ever think of everything. You could have been walking around free and clear if you'd turned state's evidence on me. Yeah, I could. You ever regret it? Well, being in stir wasn't exactly a beach party. <laughs> yeah. I've never regretted it. You'll still be free and clear. If I have to shoot up half the state. There's always that one thing, Sam. This time, a stray bullet in the stomach. I'll get us through. Can you make coffee? Yes, I suppose so. Come on, we're going to the kitchen. What for? To make coffee, I said, Arthur. She's not going any place with you alone. Isn't she? Get going. Kay. Go on. Kay! I said she's not going in the kitchen with you. I'm warning you, Hurley. You're in a fat position to warn anybody. Now sit down and shut up. Take it easy, Yeah, okay. take it easy, so he can get away with anything he wants. Just because he's a second-rate convict with a couple of cheap killings. Arthur, you're not shutting up. I'm fed up with you throwing your weight around just because you've got a gun. Take it away from you, you'd be a yellow blubbering rat. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take it away from you and shove it down your throat. You've got about one more step to live. Maybe it's you that's only got another minute, Hurley. <laughs> Get in there and make some coffee. Don't need the rest of you to get any ideas. I've seen a lot of low, crummy things in my life. Didn't even give the fuller a chance. Now, in the old days... And he's all keyed up. We'll have to keep our heads and play up to him. Makes me mad to see a fellow shot down like that. Get to my gun, I'd show him a thing or two. You got a gun? Show him a sack. He ain't so smart, he'd figure that out. Go get it. It's gonna get some smoke in the back of my friend. This stuff burns up like sage grass. A man gets over cranky without his own brand of tobacco. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, well, since you explained it that way. <laughs> Make a try for it later. Are you going to kill all of us? I went crazy. I couldn't help it. Don't kill me, Sam. Please don't. Let me get out of here. Or take me with you. Anything. Just... Just please don't kill me. He must have thought a lot of you. Go for me like he did. He never meant anything to me. Just take me with you when you go. You think you'd like that? Be another run all the time? I wouldn't care. Just so long as I wouldn't have to die and I could get out of this awful place. <laughs> You will take me, won't you, Sam? What about the others? I don't care. Let them go. Do anything you like. Just you and me. That's right, Sam. 
I go any place with you. Please, please, please. Did you put him outside? I had a fine life when I was a kid. My mother thought it was just great that somebody had invented men, and my father was a man of distinction to every bootlegger in Pittsburgh. Where did you go to school? Who went to school? I started hustling nickels as soon as my old man noticed I could walk. I sold papers, shoveled snow. Orphan Annie was a rich kid to our crowd. What did your father do? Well, when... He could make it across the room to the telephone. He borrowed money from my grandmother. Then he'd rest up for a couple of weeks and taper off with hair tonic and soda. How long did he live? Well, he's still kicking around. He used up all the bars in Pittsburgh, and then a couple of years ago, he started mooching his way across the country. Last I heard, he was stranded in a dry state, working his way through a case of DT. <laughs> I'm afraid to ask you about your mother. She writes she's very happy with her sixth husband. Finally settled down, huh? No. She says there's a very distinguished-looking gentleman in her bingo club who wants her to run away with him to his fox farm in Ottawa. Next stop, Canada. Mm. Six husbands, and you're still working on your first. Mother used up all the men we knew. <laughs> worth a try. How are you? You know, you belong in a hospital, Bart. We could help you if you'd give us a lift now. Not a chance, mister. Well, you've never even seen us before. What good are we going to do you did? I don't think he'll kill you. Arthur isn't too lively. He tried to jump Sam. It's a funny thing, Bart. I've noticed once a man starts killing, he usually doesn't know when to stop. What do you mean? Arthur told me about some money you've got hidden away someplace. <coughs> so? Maybe Sam will figure there isn't enough to go around. You're on the wrong track, mister. He could have left me to die any place along the line. He could change his mind. Sam and I are friends. Nobody double-crosses anybody. Where'd you get the money, Bart? Why? Just curious. Well, it's none of your business, but... A few of us held up an armored truck back east. We're the only two left alive. Well, how's Dummy figure in? He's a good man to have around when there's any trouble. I'll tell you something, Bart. You got plenty of trouble right now. A bullet in you and a pal who isn't scared of atom bombs. We'll get out in time. Give us a break, Bart. I'll give you a break. By not telling Sam you talked to me. But don't try it again. Well, I see we're all still here. Everybody been behaving themselves? We were beginning to wonder what had happened to you. What's your position on sharing the wealth? Help yourself. Thanks. Well, live a little, die a lot. Did he tell you anything between cups of coffee? About what? Whether or not he's going to give us a running start. He didn't say. Didn't talk, huh? Well, I know how that is. Why don't you just ask me what you want to know? Do I have to? Mind if I have another? Yeah, I do. Only available drink, and I have to lose my tact.
How far is the main road from here? Oh, it's about 22 miles. That's too far to walk. Think of a shortcut. The motor and that junk here, you split right down the middle. Sam, I couldn't take the pounding. That long a walk. We'll carry her in the gut here, like a stretcher. I'd never make it. That husband of yours must be real worried about you. Sam. Leading me out here in the middle of the desert with a hurt man. Sam, I, I told you. I ought to cut you up and dump you in his lap. But you promised me. You Shh. can't do it. You promised Shut me. Shut up. Listen. Sam Hurley. Just take it easy, Doc. Let's see that bag. Give me the car keys. The work's in there. Kind of tripped over his own heroics. But I guess he has plenty of insurance. He was an insurance man, wasn't he, Doc? Yeah. Yeah. Inside. Are you all right? Yes. You're not hurt? No, I, I'm all right. Never mind about her. Your patient's over here. Pain? Yeah. Too much. Where'd you get it? When? Early this morning. We gotta be out of here by five o'clock. They're shooting off a bomb. Bring me that lamp. You got quite a wife, Doc. She didn't think you'd show up. Didn't she? No, she had the idea you'd rather see her tied up in a bundle than stick your own neck out. I, uh, tried to tell her how worried you sounded on the phone. She decided not to depend on you, uh, entirely. Now, do you want to talk, or do you want me to go on with this? Oh, one more thing. You didn't tell anybody where you were going. No. You're real sure about that? I didn't tell anybody. What are you going to do, Doc? I'm going to give you some relief from the pain. should be in the hospital. Oh, now, Doc, you know better than that. He's got a bullet in him. Get it out. He won't stand a chance here. The light's poor and there's no competent assistance. So you'd better be a real good doctor. What guarantee do I have that you'll let us go if I succeed? You've got a guarantee of what'll happen if you don't. I won't promise a thing under these conditions. I'm not asking for any promises, Doc. I'm just telling you. You better pull my friend through. Now get ready. Oh, nothing. You're going to be okay. Sure. Sure, I'm sure. How do you feel now? That stuff he shot into me was good. Don't hurt me, Mark. <laughs> Why 
Why did you come? Wouldn't you have? No, I guess not. Five o'clock's gonna roll around awful fast, Doc. I'll be finished before then. I hope there's some water. These things have to be sterilized. There's a keg of water in the kitchen. I'll do it. Thanks. These and these. And boiling water. Well, and bring me a pan of hot water as soon as possible. It's gonna take long? Get that man over here. Reporter, give me a hand. Help me out here, will you? Sure, Doc. Be glad to. You know, I've always been quite interested in medicine. I had quite an experience in my younger days. Of course, I didn't have all these modern conveniences. I remember a fella shot Clear up... the table. Yeah, I'd done quite an operation once myself. Took out a fella's left lung. Only thing I had to work with was a broke beer bottle. Well, look, the fella done all right, though. Of course, he had to cut down on his smoking a little. Take it easy, Bart. In another hour, you'll be running footrests. Tell the girl to hurry with that hot water. Hey, Sam, you sure you never heard of this Martin feller? No. Hurry up with that hot water. Sure, I'll make it boil faster. You're really making the rounds, aren't you? It's a long time since I've had a chance. Doesn't the state furnish you boys with this kind of entertainment? Just wood carving. We'll be pulling out of here before long. Already? This is getting to be a home away from home. You don't have to go broke the rest of your life. No. I'll be nice to you, and then you can give me a lot of your money. I'll have a quarter of a million bucks in a couple of days. Well, that won't hurt your popularity. Everything's planned. We're leaving the country, going to South America. I thought maybe uh, you'd like to come along. Would I be number one or number two girl in this harem? Cut it out. What's the matter with that question? You made a lot of promises to Miss Pasadena. Forget about her. Okay, she's forgotten. You and I could get along. You've had a tough time, so have I. It'd be twice as tough if we got together. I don't think so. You're not too enthusiastic. Don't tell me it's that reporter out there. No, it's the guy out on the porch. Well, he didn't mean anything to you. I can't get over how suddenly he died. Do you want to come along or not? Maybe. We better get your pal fixed up first. What do you want? We'll have to form a club. You better get out there and help the doc. I can't, Sam. I'm no good at that. Please, Sam. Could you help me here? I could try. Good. Boil the instruments a few minutes more, then bring them in. Billy, there's an extra medical kit in the car. Get it. Do it, Neil? I don't know. If I can keep him from hemorrhaging out of shock, I'll be satisfied. He'll kill all of us if you don't save him. He probably will anyway. You must have known that before you came here. Why did you? I didn't have much choice as long as he had you. Oh, you, you could have sent the police. I've got to wash up. Are you still in love with me? I don't know. But I've been taking care of you for so long. I guess it's just a habit. Here you are, Doc. I don't know what all this junk is, but none of it shoots. Take that into the kitchen and have it sterilized. Yes? Yeah. All this fuss about a little old bullet. We used to dig them out of the jackknives and make watch fobs out of them. Still got a couple that got out of my right leg, carved them into cupids. Quite a guy, your husband, showing up like this. Can he do the job? 
He doesn't know. Well, at least they have a car. Just big enough for the three of them, but maybe somebody on one of their laps. Maybe you. More likely your girlfriend. She was kissing him in there a minute ago. We all do the best we can. All except you. You just sit around and say, take it easy. I don't care to emulate Arthur. Well, at least he tried to do something. And I wish he hadn't. We'd have used him later on. He sure was crazy about you. Lots of men seem to be crazy about you. Shut up. Already, Doctor. Just a second. What's that? Sodium pentothal. It's an anesthetic. Miss, you'll have to administer it during the operation. Whenever I tell you to, give him one more CC. Here's a mark, here. Sam. I wish I had a Bible. You don't need one. You're gonna come through fine. Just the same, I... I'd like to hear something from the Bible. I got a Bible in my sack. All right, get it. Take the instruments out with the forceps. Just put them on the towel. What do you want to hear? Anything. I want you to start counting as I inject this. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. One. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be Two. comforted. Three. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Four. Blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Shouldn't have done that. He's getting restless. Give him another CC. longer. Just a little more. Well, hurry it up. What are you doing? You watch the others. I'll take care of him.
I'd like to take a moment for those who may have tuned in recently to announce that the scheduled time for the detonation of the atomic bomb is still set for 6 a.m., exactly two hours and 40 minutes from now. Inasmuch as precise weather conditions are required at the time of detonation, we again urge you listeners to stay tuned to this station for any possible change. And now, back to our recorded program. How is he? He'll be all right. Well, now, Doc, you see what you can do if you really put your mind to it? You should wake up in a half hour. Good. We'll just sit around till 5 o'clock, then we'll do what we can about shaking this place. You mean move them? Of course, move them. You take him over those rough roads, he'll hemorrhage and be dead in an hour. What do you mean? I thought you said he was all right. Well, he will be if you let him rest. How long? At least a day. Oh, sure. Well, I'll just sit around and toast marshmallows on the bomb blast, huh? That's your problem. You know, you two are alive on a rain check. Whatever it is, it's good to be alive. It won't last very long if you pull any more tricks. You think we're just going to sit around waiting for you to make up your mind about us? You can make a run for the door if you want to. Sam, what's the percentage in killing us? That was a nice little act you were pulling in the kitchen. You were pitching, I was just digging in the dirt for them. You might be handy to have along. I like a girl who fights for a guy. I didn't think I did too well. If you did any better, you'd be dead. Sit around and count your blessings. I don't kill you right now for what you tried. But act up again, reporter, and you'll be shaking hands with Arthur. Were you thinking of going with him? I was thinking of letting him think I might. You don't go any place without me. Sorry, I wasn't more help. That was a crazy thing for you to do. It's me. Sooner or later, one of us has got to learn to fight. We'll take up judo in the next world. Your last chance may have gone with that gun. Well, it wasn't much of a life anyway. You mean that? No. As a matter of fact, I thought things were just beginning to look up. I thought so too. I think of something. Next time, lead with the top of your head. I'd rather get killed. It was stupid. He lost his head. He didn't have a chance. Are you going to marry him after you got your divorce? I don't know. We had a lot of fun. It wasn't like you, busy all the time. It's all been the whole thing with you, hasn't it, Kay? A lot of fun. No. I think it takes a special kind of woman to be married to a doctor. I'm young and have. Plenty of money. I don't see why I should have to sit around all the time. But now this. Do you think he'll let us go now that you've saved his friend? No. I don't either. But I've got to get away, Neil. I'm so afraid to die. You aren't, are you? Well, I don't want to, but I don't think I'm afraid. I'd do anything. You don't understand that because you've never been afraid. Haven't I? Sometime I'll tell you about it. Watch this. A big reconciliation with the loyal little wife. Sam. You poor guy. You take this long trip and stick your neck into a noose for her. Do you know what she wants to do? Shut up. She wants to come along with me. She doesn't care what happens to any of the rest of them. Or if you get left behind. Leave her alone, Hurley. Sam, you promised to I'd sit. take you along. Why should I? You're a real bad dame, honey. Nobody could count on you for ten minutes. I said leave her alone. Okay, Doc. <laughs> as long as I don't get stuck with her. Sam, please, you can't. The answer is no. Well, 
Cloud ready? Cloud. Patrol station, Colonel Ryan. Just a moment. Professor? Yes? Yes. Very well. Yes, we will be. Right. That was Desert Rock. The weather's going to be all right at 5 o'clock. We'll go then. You'd better alert all personnel. Right. Attention, all personnel. The time of the explosion has been moved up from 0600 hours to 0500 hours. The time of the explosion has been moved up to 0500 hours. I will now repeat the final alert signals. At five minutes to zero, a siren will be sounded. At one minute to zero, a green flare will be sent up. At 30 seconds to zero, the master robot will take over and set off the detonation. I repeat, H hour is 0500. It is now exactly 0445. The detonation will occur in 15 minutes. How long have I been asleep? About an hour. What time is it? It's nearly five. Aren't you going to do anything, Neil? Well, it's silly to try anything against their guns if there's even a chance they might let us go. He won't let us go. You said so. Neil, if we should live through this... Yes? Would you like to try again? I don't think so, Kay. But to come up here the way you did, you must still love me. Well, I suppose I do. But I understand the basic weakness in you that makes you do the things you do. Well? Just because I understand it doesn't mean I want to put up with it anymore. I say no. You really should come with me. I'd be good to you. You don't want me, Sam. I'd stick a knife in your back the first chance I got. Here, put this on. What's the matter? No, it's all right. Oh, it's wrong, Sam. It hurts. I told you, Hurley, if you move him, he'll be dead in an hour. What do you think will happen to him if we hang around here? I'll just slow you up, Sam. And the doctor's right. I won't make it. Forget that kind of talk. Just sit here a minute until you get a little of your strength back. Want to change your mind? Take the doctor's wife. She's scared to death. Yes, Sam, take me. What will the people in Pasadena say? I don't care. Jane! 
Kay, just for once in your life, have the courage to face something decent. You hear what he says? What do you think your life's going to mean to you if you save it this way? I want to go. You know, it's downright flattering to have a girl so crazy about you. She'd leave her husband, defy society. You are crazy about me, aren't you, honey? Yes, Sam. Yes. There's a girl with character. Dolly, get that rope out of the kitchen. The rope? You're not going to tie us up unless you'd rather get shot. Well, I can't help it. If I let you walk out of here, you'll be on a phone before I get out of the state. Sam, let him go. Let him go? Yeah. I wouldn't feel right about letting him get killed. Well, how would you feel about letting him spoil all our plans? I can't help it, Sam. I come too close to die. I wouldn't want it on my conscience. Well, forget about it. I'll carry it on mine. Go ahead. I mean it, Sam. I said forget it. I'm sorry, Sam. I just couldn't take it. You're pulling the gun on me, boy? You know, I don't like a gun on me. Even from you. Then leave him alone. Don't tie him up. No. You're going to. Give me that gun. Don't try it, Sam. What's that? It's the warning signal. The bomb will go off in five minutes. You're crazy. The bomb's going off at six. They must have changed their minds. I told you they could. Dummy. Come on, Bob. Hold them here till we get in the car. Sam! Kate! seconds. Zero minus 95 seconds. Zero minus 75 seconds. Five seconds. Zero minus forty five seconds. We're not gonna make it. Zero minus thirty five seconds. Zero minus thirty seconds. The master robot is now taking over. Here we go. Thirteen. Seven. Six. Three. Two. 
One. I'm going out now. stay around too long. There'll be army trucks in the area soon. Okay, Doc? Yeah. Let's take a look at the world of tomorrow. <laughs> 